Did you happen to attend today's inauguration? Didn't happen to. I uh, I took the COVID test, uh, went through the whole process, and uh, this was my sixth inaugural, my fifth president that I've been there for, and uh, uh, this one was different than any others. There were uh, we were socially distanced. There were about one tenth as many people in the uh, the major stands, and then a million less people. Uh, along the uh, uh, Pennsylvania Avenue. Yeah, talk a little bit more about the historic nature. I mean, you've got Vice President Kamala Harris being sworn in, and then, as you say, this is all happening during a pandemic. Such an odd kind of uh, just afternoon, really. Well, I guess, you know, when you think about the inaugural, uh, each of them, and I've been, like I say, this was my sixth, uh, it's really a chance for the United States to show the entire world a peaceful transition uh, a, a way that it, it, it should be done. Vice President Pence was there along with all the living former presidents except Jimmy Carter, who simply for health reasons couldn't be there. Uh, the uh, Most of the chief justices, six or, or the justices, six of them were there, uh, and uh, over 200 members of Congress. But the real audience was the same audience it already is. A big chunk of six or seven billion people who were aware that the United States for, uh, you know, uh, over 200 years has time after time had a peaceful transition, uh, not just from one president to another, but very often from one party to another. As I was listening to the speech uh, this morning, he really talked about unity, bringing the country together. Uh, Certainly it's been uh, divisive. It was a very close election. What did you take away from his speech and what did you think uh, as we move forward? Well, I think we uh, there's two Joe Bidens. There's the Joe Biden that uh, you know clearly has an agenda, and it's a very liberal agenda, and it's going to roll back a lot of the things that made the United States do as well as we've done. But I also have worked with Joe Biden on multiple pieces of legislation. He knows how to be supportive, and he knows how to compromise. So uh, given the close nature of the House and Senate, uh, there's a real opportunity for true bipartisan legislation that includes the president. Uh, And after all, you know, at the end of the day, uh, you know, if you only have a a small majority, you need the president. And on the other hand, you only have a small majority. From time to time, the president needs the other party. He was pretty busy this afternoon signing 17 executive orders. They range from uh, the border wall, ending the Muslim ban, uh, joining the Paris Climate Accord, talked a lot about um, halting the departure of the uh, World Health Organization. Uh, What what are your thoughts just in general on some of the things he did this afternoon? Well, it's the nature of executive orders is that uh, uh, they're supposed to be dutifully executing law but very often what they are is making law by one president and then another. President Obama was famous for saying he had a, uh, uh, a phone and a pen. And, uh, you know, President Trump followed. And now uh, President Biden is doing the same. I'm not a real fan of executive orders that can flip-flop back and forth because the intent of Congress should not be at the whim of, of the chief executive. But that's the world we live in. And working with this president it now becomes my obligation. What do you think happens with the Senate trial for the impeachment of uh, former President Donald Trump as we move forward? I have high hopes that there won't be a trial, that recognizing that we don't impeach people and remove them from office after they've left office, uh, it's, not, it's not only not a tradition, it's very dubious as to whether it can be done. Uh, it also is a huge waste of President Biden's uh, uh, first 100 days. Uh, he really does need the Senate to go to work. He needs the House to go to work. He's sending legislation uh, that he wants acted on quickly. Uh, you know, the Senate is a delicate body. Uh, if one Democrat uh, passes away or one Republican passes away, uh, you know, it, the, the, the body changes. So. Uh, If I were the president, I would tell the Senate to go to work and uh, to recognize that President Trump peacefully left uh, office. He is uh, now just uh, uh, another citizen. And quite frankly, it's time that we move on. Uh, That's my sincere hope. And I think that's Joe Biden's tradition. And he's indicated that he doesn't have a particular interest uh, in pursuing that. But it's up to the Senate. 
What are you most looking forward to as we begin 2021 uh, in Congress, especially for all of us here in the San Diego area? Well, you know, uh, there's a lot of work that is half done or undone. Uh, I gave an example earlier today. Uh, Juan Vargas was able to, during my two-year absence, get a substantial amount of money, about $300 million, to help with cleaning up the, the Tijuana River. Uh, but that's going to take follow-on legislation, and we're going to have to try to push to get that through quickly and get it through the Senate. Uh, obviously, we have a brand-new senator uh, over on the other side of the dome. Uh, hopefully, uh, our senators will realize how important getting the Tijuana River cleaned up is to San Diego and, to a great extent, to Tijuana. Congressman Darrell Issa, great to see you, Congressman. Thanks for taking the time. Enjoy the conversation. Thank you.